what's up guys and welcome back to the channel in today's video we're going to be covering how to use the flutterflow visual studio code extension to edit all your custom codes if you haven't already please just be sure to hit the sub button because that's really going to do us a huge favor now the flutterflow visual studio code extension gives you the ability to simply modify all your flutterflow custom codes within visual studio code now that is very, very powerful because within uh, visual studio code you can use something like code suggestions you can access the entire code base like the flutter flow code that has been generated you can um, access everything and then you can also be modifying your code in real time while you're testing that's going to speed up the way you write custom code and also use the capability of like, a normal traditional ide to edit our code now, I don't like to take much time to talk about it. One beautiful thing Flutterflow has done is there's a documentation that you can definitely check out. So the first thing we want to do is head over to uh, the Visual Studio Code uh, Marketplace. And you see this is the um, extension, right? So you have the details that they have set here. Everything you have to do from installing to whatnot. So I have this folder. I'm just going to open this folder onto VS Code. And then let's start our new project. So I have my Visual Studio Code here open. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open a new folder. This is an empty folder that I created and let's get into it now one thing you have to understand is to be able to use this extension like normally you should have flutter already installed on your device you should have flutter installed before you be able to have these full capabilities so according to the instructions we have to go over to the extensions tab here on vs code and then we we'll search for flutter flow right i don't have it installed yet i'm going to search for flutter flow custom code editor so this is the extension then the next thing is you just simply install the extension right we've installed the custom code extension but right, it looks like it has some compatibility issues i'm just going to go ahead and update my visual studio code and try again so i'm going to click on install to install the um, extension like i mentioned it is very important that you have a uh, flutter and that already installed on your app on your pc so so far i have flutter and i have that if i run something like flutter doctor you are going to see the output and it's going to be valid flutter doctor so you are going to see this output now here we have um various settings that we still need to do we have uh, configurations that we have to do to set up our api key our flutterflow api key into this extension on the settings section so i'm just going to open this here or click on this link to go to my flutterflow account page where i'm going to generate my access token right i'm going to open it here and on the web browser why that is opening back here on vs code i'm going to come to this um, settings here and I'll say extension settings. This is where we have to do this thing. So on the extension settings, we need to set up this project ID. There are various things that we have to specify or that we can specify. So you can specify the Flutterflow user API token. This is going to give um, the extension access to your project. This is supposed to be kept as a secret, by the way. Now I have a project ID as in the project that I want to pull. You need to uh, find the ID. The download location where you want to specify you, are, you need to specify where um, the thing should download to and the branch name by default is going to be pulling on the main branch so you don't need to specify that or you can just in most use cases just specify only the user api token and when you want to pull the code to use then you are going to be prompted to specify the download location the branch name and the project id so as you can see down here on your settings on your uh, flutterflow accounts you are going to see if you if you do not have a an api token you'll be prompted to create one i already have one so i'm just going to copy this access token and i'm going to paste it over here on my extension the flutterflow extension so i'm going to paste the user access token here so i've pasted i've pasted my access token and my api key and i want to specify this download location i'm just doing this for now just so i don't have to worry about it so i created this example folder like this folder that i currently have open i'm just going to specify that and voila we are good to go that's all we need for the configuration so the next thing we have to do is to download the code right we need to download the code from flutterflow down to our vs code now, doing all of that following these instructions here like in the settings they say for basic usage you need to download the code first right after downloading the code, we need to initialize a code editing session and then edit our custom code, whatever code I want to edit, and then probably test the changes and then pull, we can pull changes from Flutterflow and also push back to Flutterflow, right? So to do that, all we are going to do real quick is we are going to open the extension to prompt us to download our code. So I have this Flutterflow project that I'm going to use, our Flutterflow update project. And I'm going to copy it real quick, copy the project ID. So pull the code. I'm going to come here on view. I can use a shortcut right? command pipe. And I'll see for Flutterflow. If I search for Flutterflow, 
I see the various code that I can, uh, commands that I can run. So I'm going to run Flutter flow download code and it's going to prompt me for the project ID. As you can see, I don't know if you can see that very well. As you can see up here, it is prompting me for the project ID. I'm going to paste in this project ID that I copied from my Flutter flow project up here. Click on enter. It's asking for the branch. I can either specify a branch or leave it to be main by default. If I have a specific branch that I want to pull, I can specify the branch here. But if I just leave it empty, it's going to by default pull from the main uh, from the main branch. So I'm just going to leave it empty so that it should pull from there. And in a couple of seconds, it's asking for the directory. So this is a folder that I already set the last time, right? And I'm going to select download location, let it be inside that folder. And in a couple of seconds, the project is going to be downloaded. Now the project download is finished and right here, we can go about editing our code and pushing back to Flutterflow. So just for a recap, uh, if we check at the extension again, we're going to see the next step is for us to be able to edit our code. We need to actually start a code editing session. I'm going to click back here again on view and I'm going to command palette. I can just use the shortcut control shift P and I'm going to say the next command is start code editing session. So when you click on start code, uh, start code editing session, it is going to pull like all the packages, right? All the packages that that project is using are going to be pulled down. So I'm going to click on that and let's start the code editing session. So that's a package pulling and if you are getting errors and you see the warnings and whatnot, let's wait for it to complete. Now our code editing session has started and right here, I can even go as far as to start testing my application locally, right? Just like how Flutter allows us to do. So down here, I'm just going to select the device. Let me say I want to test on Chrome and I can start testing. Chrome has been connected and I start a test mode on, on Chrome. So this is how you edit your custom code. Inside this lib directory, we have what we call custom code. And all of these, your custom actions and your custom widgets and even your custom functions are going to be here. Currently for this project, I don't have that much. I think I have just custom. Okay. I have custom functions. I have custom widgets and cost, I have just a custom action, uh, action, one custom action called print text. So this is our custom action that's called print text, right? So I can start editing this print text code here. If you can see this print text custom action, it matches what is on Flutterflow. So I can start editing here on my local device and then push back to Flutterflow. Now, if you notice, you see like inside this custom code, you see just actions and widgets. And you may be wondering, where are the functions? Now the functions are currently inside this Flutterflow directory, right? Inside this lib Flutterflow. And if you put this drop down and you're going to see custom functions of that. So all your custom functions are inside the same file, right? I think there are multiple functions that I have, which you can see here on my Flutterflow project itself that I have these functions. I you see, create that long, this is a sort employee, sort new employee, get page token and all the like. So these are the various functions that I have in my project that I are seeing them now. Okay. So again, we can edit this, right? We can edit this and then push back to Flutterflow. But before that, let's just start that test session to see how it actually works locally. So I'm going to run and debug. Again, I've already selected my Chrome as a device I want to um, initialize um, a local development on. So I'm just going to wait for that to, to finish starting. And please, you can neglect like all of these warnings. These are just uh, warnings. They are not actual errors. So you can actually neglect those. One thing to note is you can only edit your custom code here on this editor. Because if you try to edit something like, uh, let's go in front, uh, let's choose something like uh, these pages. If I enter under pages, these are the pages I have under my um, project. So if I come here under this page, I cannot edit this page. This page is read only. So we are only allowed to modify code that is inside this directory, this custom code. But again, we can, I think, override that further flow. Like this editor is read only because the file was set to read only via settings. So we can toggle for this session to allow it to be uh, writable so that I can write, but it's not advisable to do that because it's not going to sync very well with back with your Flutter flow um, project. So you're only allowed to edit the code that is inside this custom code directory. Now let's take, for example, I want to edit this code probably like you have to be a custom code that does something. This is just an example I'm demonstrating. I can come here in this file and I manually edit. Let me add another print statement again. And I'm going to say print something like uh, hello world. And just like that, I'll save that. That is automatically saved. And I can just click here on this action button at the bottom here 
it's going to push to flutter flow or if i come back here on view command palette i can see the flutter flow a command to use and push back to flutter flow so i'm going to use a command and i say push to flutter flow so you see this uh, notification here that says syncing with flutter flow and successfully synced so synced with flutter flow now if i go back to my project and I check it out i should be able to see these changes that have been sent directly to uh, my application so this next line this statement should be added to my custom action right let's check that out so here we are let me just leave the project and come back this thing doesn't want to show let me come here and um, let's go back to the code okay yeah there is it so we have our hello world here that's been added and uh Back here on Flutter, uh, sorry, on VS Code, we can continue editing like that. Let me show you how you can pull your changes from Flutter Flow. Let's take, for example, I'm still going to make another change here on this, still on this same um, code. I'm going to add a comment, say, this is a comment. Now I'm going to save. Now this particular line is not available on our local uh, change that we have here on VS Code. It is not currently available there. So if I pull from Flutter Flow, we should see that line added so i'm going to pull that in one second latest if now when you're pulling it's good to note that the changes i have on flutter flow will supersede what you have on your local uh, code base so make sure that you don't have anything that is important before you are pulling or like otherwise it's going to be overwritten so i'm going to pull let's click on yes and it's going to pull in okay, case it has pulled and then it's running now flutter pop get just in case there's any new thing and you saw this comment appeared here this is a comment by the way our test mode our debug mode started effectively this is it here on this side it was hidden so one useful thing of running a code locally is you can actually use you can also actually actually test it locally so when you're making your changes you can test it here on vs code before you push back to flutter flow so that's a very useful thing that is going to be very handy and testing here on your local device is much more faster anyways let's move on to the next thing so we've put this thing now let me show you how if you want to create a new custom code if at any point you are wondering what files you have edited or what files you have modified there is this helper menu down here right that if you put it down you drop it down you are going to see the files that have been modified so you see ff modified files currently we don't have anything let me say i modify this thing instead of okay let me just add a comment and i say statement returns right and if i save that then in our modified files, we should see that we have modified these custom functions of that. And then now we can know how to, sorry, we can know now how to push back to Flutter Flow. So that's just what the things I need to take note of. We have this custom function modified. Again, if you want to create a custom function, you can create a custom function inside here and make your changes or whatsoever thing. That's up to you. So I'm going to push Flutter Flow. And after it's syncing, this should appear on my Flutter Flow with this comment. And right here, where is this thing? Let me see. Uh, get email page token. Okay, this is a thing. And you see, this is our statement return that we've modified. Now, let's say we want to create a simple function that um, converts a string to JSON. We often see, the, uh, see this. I want to create a simple um, function that converts a string to JSON, maybe from an API request or something. So I'm going to do a dynamic, right? I'm going to do something like this. Now, this is just my, um, how you call it, a co-pilot suggesting things. I'm going to make a video on how you can use this thing at uh, Flutterflow and Cursor. So the, the, the description is going to be down below. So I'm going to write dynamic uh, and I'll say string to JSON. Let me just name the function like that. And what it receives is it receives a string, right? And again, let's say text. I'm going to put a text and I'm going to do my curly braces. And what this simply receives is does is I'm just going to do. In fact, I have this code suggestion I can just do. I wanted to show you guys how you can actually write. Now, this is the beauty of why you need to be editing your custom code locally because you can use AI suggestions like this. If I just click on tab, all of this code is going to be written for me. Whereas maybe using the um, Flutter Flow Copilot that they have is going to take some time or whatnot. But this has already written the code that I want to do. Now, if I save this, currently we don't have any modified files. If I save this, we should have a modified file. And our application is going to be hot reloading. Again, this is our app. It's going to be hot reloading. You can see it's on debug mode. These are all the flutter flow of this are them. And if I come and I push the flutter flow, what we are hoping to achieve is we should see a new custom function added here on the site. Right. So let me push that. Let's see. 
and I'm going to push to flutter flow. So it's very sync to flutter flow. All right, if I come here, I should see. Uh, let me go out and then come back. Come back to custom code. And uh, okay, you see string to JSON. That has been added. This is the code that we've modified. And it's important. This is wonderful. This has already changed the way we can do so many things. Now we've created a custom function. The similar thing is going to happen if we try to create a custom action. Let me go into um, widget, for example. Let me go into widget and try to create a custom widget. Another thing to note is if you are trying to rename probably like one of these, uh, your custom code that you have, like say this print text, if you try to rename it, when you rename it to the new name, you also need to modify this import here and let it have the new name that you've uh, renamed it to. So back here on my um, VS code, I'm going to try to create a custom widget. We don't have a custom widget, right? So let me just create a beautiful button widget, for example. So according to the documentation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here and I'll click on new file. I'm just going to name the file, say beautiful underscore button that, and I have to give it the extension and I click on enter. Now, this is automatically supposed to do some flutter flow import. But for some weird reason, I'm not seeing that happening. So I don't know how I'm going to test this. I'm looking, referring to the documentation, what the documentation is suggesting. Like if you actually create a new resource, it's going to do some import and then you can start editing your code. But I'm not seeing that happening. I'm not sure if it's from my end or whatsoever. Now, this is an issue that it's current. I don't know why it's happening, but it's an issue that I have reported on Flutterflow. And I have, they have an open issue. I recorded a video showing them why. So this is a whole issue. I created this issue, gave some helper, recorded a video and sent where they asked and Hopefully it gets rectified, but this is the idea like this I can use um, Flutterflow VS uh, Visual Studio Code extension to write and modify a custom code. Anyways, guys, I really wish I was away for me to test this out and demonstrate how that goes, but I'm not seeing any means to continue. Please, if you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and pause it again. Hit the thumbs up, leave a comment and let me know if you have any videos, ideas I want me to see, you want to see me uh, create. And thank you very much for watching have a great day and also i'm going to be posting a video description is going to be down below subsequently on how you can use corso also it's an same thing to edit and write amazing custom code so you want to stick around for that be sure to check out other videos and thank you very much